This morning we're going to be looking at this lovely deep psalm, one of the psalms of ascent, Psalm 122. Let's stand together and let me read it for us. Psalm 122, and this is a psalm of our friend, King David. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem, that is built as a city that is compact together, to which the tribes go up, even the tribes of the Lord, an ordinance for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. For their thrones were set for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. May peace be within your walls and prosperity within your palaces for the sake of my brothers and my friends. I will now say, may peace be within you for the sake of the house of the Lord our God. I will seek your good. You may be seated within God's word. This morning, I'd like to give us 10 aspects and places, motivations of peace. It says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Within the spiritual city of God is peace, and only within the spiritual city of God. I've been to Jerusalem numbers of times. My grandfather actually lived there for 27 years, and my grandmother. My grandmother was almost killed by a bomb blast that went off six yards from her bed as they bombed this central place, the Haganah, bombed it because the British had set up house there and were oppressing, the British were oppressing the Jews. Why has England lost its kingdom worldwide? It used to be said the sun never sets on the British Empire. Now it does. Peace only within the spiritual city of Jerusalem. I pray that you and I are within her gates. We're citizens of the heavenly Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem. Don't expect his peace outside of those gates. It's within financial integrity. It's within tithing and debt retirement and living within our means. It's within the gates of moral purity. It's within the gates of true fellowship with each other, right? It's within the gates of the will of God. And that's where God means for our feet to always stand. Jerusalem that is built as a city that is compact together. In other words, no mistakes in God. Compact exactly as it's meant to be. The new Jerusalem with its glory and wonder and magnificence is exactly the way it's meant to be for you and I to walk those celestial streets, translucent gold forever. Give thanks to the name. Now, I want to give us 10, if I can, here this morning, aspects, places, and 
motivations that motivate peace. The first one is that we need to be standing within the gates. The second one is to give thanks to the name. Give thanks to the name. This is found in verse 4, to which the tribes go up, even the tribes of the Lord, an ordinance for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. The name above all names. I'd like to read from Philippians, the second chapter. Philippians chapter 2, and you can turn with me if you want to, but I'll read it for us. Philippians 2, starting with verse 5, says these tremendous words. It says, have this attitude in yourselves, which also was in Christ Jesus, who although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself. This is the great kenosis, the emptying of Christ. But emptied himself, taking the form of a bond servant, and being made in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those who were in heaven and on earth and under the earth. <laughs> And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The name. I can hardly say enough about the name of Jesus. Are you ashamed of his name? Are we ashamed to tell people of the name of Jesus? People are always tying around me saying, oh my, and you know the other end of the phrase, oh my God. And of course, I always ask the question, is he your God? You like to use his name flippantly, but is he your God? Because certainly he is God. And certainly every knee will bow and every tongue confess those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. That means everyone in hell will confess that Jesus is in fact Lord. I just got an email this week that said to me, because of this video we've been running, no matter what, I will never confess Jesus is God. I hate his book, and I hate him, and I will never confess him. Of course, what's the answer to that? Of course you will. Of course you will. Why? It's written. It's done. Matthew 10, I will ask you to turn to this one briefly with me. Matthew 10, very, very clear, our Savior. Matthew 10, verse 32. And if we're talking about peace, then we need to do all the aspects of peace, don't we? <laughs> Everyone who therefore confesses me before man... I will also confess him before my Father who is in heaven. I'm reading from Matthew 10, verse 32, and now I'm moving into 33. But whoever shall deny me before men, I will also deny him before my Father who is in heaven. Strong scripture for you in school, isn't it? Strong scripture for you at work. Maybe you're retired and you're still going to meet many people. Strong scripture for us to confess. Jesus, Lord, let's try it. Jesus is Lord. Absolutely. It says in verse 5, it says, For their thrones were set up for judgment, 
the thrones of the house of David. So the first one of our ten was to stand within his gates. Second one is to give thanks to the name, the name, the name. And third, their thrones were set for what? Their thrones were set for judgment. God's thrones for his princesses and his daughters, are you one? Those thrones are not set there for you to relax. They're not set there for luxury. They're certainly not set there for self-glorification. They're set for judging and judgment. <laughs> you know, it says in 1 Corinthians 6.3 that we will judge angels. Wow. <laughs> we'll judge angels? Go figure. So the world says, don't judge, can't judge, mustn't not judge. Let everybody do whatever they want. No problem. Step back. Don't say anything. This is the great muzzle, muzzle of the church. They've taken that scripture completely out of context. And our son David did an extremely good exegesis recently in this pulpit about what this really meant. It actually means the opposite than don't say anything. It means get straight, take the, right, the log out of your own eye so that you can see the speck in your brother's eye so we can speak to the culture. In other words, get right with God so you can speak to the culture and be effective. So the next time somebody says, oh, you can't judge, be sure to say, I absolutely can and will. <laughs> Try it with me. I absolutely can and will. See what they do. <laughs> what? Never heard of such a thing. Oh, if you will allow the Spirit to touch you, all those that are hearing this voice, you can become effective for the kingdom of God. If you really allow the word to change you, would you? Allow the word to change you. Allow it to affect you. Allow the word to remold you into the image of who? Christ Jesus, certainly. And the word will do this. We will judge angels and we'll be able to take the speck out of people's eyes and say something to this culture. This culture absolutely must be spoken to. Verse 6, and this is where the fourth one is found. It says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Let me ask an obvious question. Why are you praying for the peace of Jerusalem? Right? Because you want to sell more merchandise there? I've been up and down the streets. My wife and I have Jerusalem. They sell merchandise. Is that why you're praying for the peace of Jerusalem? Are you praying so that the Arabs and the Israelis can get along? Is that your bottom line? <laughs> Is it so you can visit the holy sites? Is that why we're praying for the peace of Jerusalem? Can I help us? We're praying for the peace of Jerusalem because the king returns there. This is where the king will come. The ruler of all nations. It's going to be the greatest entrance of a conquering king in the history of the world. When Christ rides into Jerusalem on that stallion from heaven, with you by his side, what a day that will be. What a day. So number four, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem because the king returns there. Clear enough? You got this one, right? Okay. All right, good. The fifth one is found in this same verse. It says, may they prosper who love you. Prosper who love you. Now, does this prosper mean cash? <laughs> does it mean money? Is it funds? Or is it the prosperity 
of God related to your children and carrying the peace of the Lord and eternal security. Look, no one can take your salvation away, and that includes you. <laughs> now, God might take you home if you get into deep sin and away from him. He might take you right out of here, but you're not going to lose your salvation. Our salvation is eternal. Always, 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 we will prosper in heaven with our salvation. This prosperity includes our work and our family and our future. Boy, is that an important word, our future. Prosper, who love you. The sixth one is found in verse 7. I'll read it for us. May peace be within your walls and prosperity within your palaces. Long for theocracy. Say it with me. Long for theocracy. What is theocracy? It's absolute rulership of Theo, of God. The absolute rulership of God. And this is not talking about the love God that this world worships. This is God supreme. It's theocracy. God, absolute ruler. You say, I don't know if I like that. Well, <laughs> doesn't really matter <laughs> whether we like it or not. This is the way it's going to be. Look at Revelation, the second chapter, verse 27. Revelation 2, 27. <laughs> this is, of course, quoting from Isaiah. It's also quoting from Jeremiah, but Revelation 2.27 says these words, And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of the potter are broken to pieces, as I also have received authority from my Father. When the Lord Jesus Christ comes to rule, he'll rule with an iron scepter. Now let me give you a little phrase, and you already know this one, but I'll still say it. Peace is not the absence of war. It's the presence of the Prince of Peace. Peace is not the absence of war. It's the presence of the Prince of Peace. The seventh one is also found within this seventh verse. Prosperity within your palaces. Boy, this is a wonderful phrase. Prosperity within your palaces. Palaces? Plural? So it isn't just the palace of the king. It isn't just the Lord Jesus Christ's palace. It's all the palaces of the daughters and sons of God. John 14. Want to look there with me? John 14. First three verses. Let's stand. John 14. Oh, do I love this. Let not your heart be troubled. I'm reading from verse 1, 2, 3. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. You may be seated. Mm. Prosperity within your palaces. The palaces of God is number seven. Number eight, this is found in the eighth verse. For the sake of my brothers and my friends, I will now say, may peace be within you. For the sake of my brothers 
That's number eight. Again, we're talking about all the different places of peace. The peace of our believing brothers is critical. It's essential and absolutely necessary. It's the reason we tend to our own spiritual house first. You see, that's awfully selfish. No, it's awfully biblical that we care for the brethren. So if your sister's hurting, I'm not talking about the one four blocks down, some neighbor. I'm talking about your sister, spiritual sister. If she's hurting, it's important to you. It's critical that we, that are part of the household of God, care for our brothers and sisters. It's the reason we're called a spiritual house. Ninth one is this one, also found in the same verse, my friends. For the sake of my brothers and my friends, there are many that will come to Christ and move from being friends to brothers. Very big difference, is there? Very big difference between being a friend or being a brother or a sister. This is why when you're hurting, we bring the whole church around you, right? Absolutely. But not just now, for the next age. Now, this might sound controversial. (laughs) The age of wrath will draw many, many to Christ. And we are very close to the age of wrath. I've heard it said, well, many will come to the Lord during the tribulation. That actually isn't accurate. During the tribulation will be the greatest revival in the history of the world. Just read the book. I've heard it said it'll be almost like the Old Testament prophets. Well, times a thousand. (laughs) The age to come when God pours his wrath, which is soon on the earth, it will cause many multitudes to come to the Lord. And his witnesses will have the power like no prophets ever in history. What we are doing, and here's the controversial statement, ready? What we are doing right now is setting the stage for the next dispensation. In other words, we're casting seeds now, and they will come to fruition in God's time, which I believe is close. You say, my life doesn't count for much. Oh, really? It counts greatly for the kingdom of God because of the place where we find ourselves right at the edge of the change of the ages between the age of the church, the church age of grace, and the next age, the age of wrath, the tribulation. We're sowing seeds. That includes even you. Seeds that will come back soon in people's lives. Tenth and last one is found in the ninth verse. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. The ultimate motivation for peace is not us. Shucks. (laughs) I thought it was all about me. The ultimate motivation for peace is about the house of of God. So well we do to sing peace, peace, wonderful peace. I agree. As long as we remember that the peace that God gives us, the joy that fills our heart, the rest of our souls is for the good of the house of God. Amen. Amen. Before I close, let me diverge.
We have been running a video called The Final Warning. It's for the United States. And we've been running a video that we did in this room with us here. And we've sent it out. And this video is 51 minutes long. And what I'm getting ready to say to you is absolutely unprecedented. The video has had three hundred and fifty thousand views that's more than a third of a million viewers we have now warned one out of every 1,000 people in the United States you say that's not much oh that's something 2,000 have shared it with someone else nearly 5,000 likes 700 comments David Free, our son, and I did this message. It's having a gigantic impact already on the culture. I know I've done this before. I'll do it again. Let me read you a couple of comments that have come out. The end times is here. I mean, I cannot tell you the number of comments we're getting it feels like no one has heard a message like this. They've heard messages, they've heard correction, but no one has heard a message like this. We're getting hundreds of thousands. God, have mercy on our souls. Now that matters. Another comment, I believe, I believe the pastors need to tell the people the truth. What does that say to you? It says the double thing. That they're wanting the pastors to do it, but it's also saying they're not doing it. <laughs> 350,000 pastors in the United States not doing it. Why? Numbers, money, whatever. Next comment. One day, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess Jesus is Lord. This is evoking things from these people. Next comment, this is what I absolutely believe. Prepare your hearts. And there was people are saying, before you listen to this video, prepare your hearts. Next comment, pray for our country. Next comment, I believe it. I believe most people have turned their backs on God. Next comment, we deserve every judgment God bestows on this country for what we've allowed to go on. Wow. <laughs> this is waking some people up. Oh, here's the next comment. People better wake up. <laughs> Next comment, last days. That's all they said, last days. Can you imagine this? I mean, this video is ev elicited and evoked a number of things. Anyway, this sh is the next comment. This should be in all Christian churches to really open our eyes to the truth of America. Now, Thursday, this Thursday, We've taken this 51 minute video, which has had 350,000, actually more than that now, <laughs> 350,000 views. We've taken this 51 minute video and have boiled it down to four minutes and 57 seconds. And this Thursday, the 25th, we're gonna run this trailer, we're calling it, the final warning trailer out to America. Now, if a 51-minute video can get more than a third of a million views, what would a 4-minute and 57-second trailer get? Several more. I want to play for us just the last six minutes of the full video. Again, I said it was 51 minutes long. I want to start us right towards the end at 45, 45 minutes. Just play you the last six minutes of it. It'll give you a taste of what's out there. I think it's quite powerful ending.
some of the comments were when they were done, they were just left stunned and in tears, which is wonderful. Last six minutes. Six minutes. This is just the conclusion of what 350,000 viewers have seen and growing by the hour. The pathway of sin, godlessness, greed, lust, and self has finally caught up with the people of pride. The generation of evil. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. Proverbs 4.19 says the way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know over what they will stumble. In other words, men will not even understand that they're caught in the quicksand of the wrath of God. Then when they realize why they're having all this trouble, they sink, they stumble, they fall. I believe the United States is vulnerable. We're hated. You know this, right? They hate us. And we're cocky. And we're fat. She's prime for disaster. Europe despises us. They do. Europe despises us. And I've lived in Europe. Islam violently hates us doesn't just kind of dislike us, violently hates us. Internal tensions are ready to explode. I would call to your attention, I'm not prophesying that one or the other of these is going to happen. I'm just saying I call this to your attention. North Korea, I just call it to your attention. Whether it's a nuclear bomb or maybe they fire 60 and only one or two get through. I call your attention to Yellowstone, which is bubbling and had many small quakes. I call your attention to the new Madras Fault that runs up the Mississippi between Memphis and St. Louis. I call your attention to nature which is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. Time's up. It's done. It's over. This is the final warning. Let me conclude this message with a message to the true believers. If you're a true believer, everything in your heart should be saying, he's now talking to me. <laughs> If you're a true believer, what should be your stance to what you've heard? It should be humility. Humility. Gentleness and brokenheartedness and a softness of heart. It should be humbleness. We're dust. Just dust. Just dust. Humbleness, He's all in all. It should be a response of prayer. There's always a call to pray. There's always a call to prayer. Your response should be vigilance as the watchman on the wall, calling all to warning. Our response should be carrying the fruit, singular, fruit of the Holy Spirit. I'll list them. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. We should be living the Beatitudes. We've been studying week after week, haven't we, from Matthew 5. We should be living them, the Beatitudes. Blessed are, and it lists 10 of them. And we should finally, and I'll close with this, last scripture, and I'll come down with you to read it close to you. Stand with me.
It's from the Apostle John. And it's chapter 14. Verse 25. It says, But these things I have spoken to you while abiding with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. And then I so need at this moment, verse 27, peace. I leave with you my peace. I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. You've heard that I said to you, I go away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I go to the Father. The Father is greater than I. And now I've told you before it comes to pass that when it comes to pass, you may believe. I will not speak much more with you. For the ruler of the world is coming. And he has nothing with me. But the world may know that I love the Father as the Father gave me commandment. Even so, I do. Arise, let us go from here. Jesus, you're our peace. You're the Prince of Peace. We thank you for your word this morning. We thank you we could worship. And Lord, as this video goes out to hundreds of thousands, we pray it would minister deeply to people and would draw many to you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your glory. And we say with the saints of all the past ages, come soon, Lord Jesus. Amen.